Mike Dean. Corrosion of conformity. Los Angeles, sunny, warm. Oh, wait a minute. It hasn't been that way lately. Anyways, we're here tonight to talk about CLC's last date on the Black Label Society Tour. How are you guys doing? We're doing well, but it's been, uh, it's been like nine, nine, nine and a half weeks of, of this. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're well seasoned. One of the things that's interesting <laughs> is on the way into the venue, they have what you would call metal detectors, security metal detectors. What's up with that? Are you expecting some metal world? Well, I mean... Is Ozzy coming to the Fitty, show? Fifty Cent is coming out tonight. And <laughs> there's some beef or something. No, I don't know. It's it's. Uh, Has this been going on through the whole I think tour? It's, occasionally, I think that people see the sort of quasi biker esque attire, and they're assuming that like some other contingent of biker attired people will come and and you know cause mayhem or something. I hadn't seen any evidence of that because it's a very warm and cuddly scene, but that's all I can think because yeah, occasionally it pop. Every third show, there's some. We're, we're living in a day and age now where sleep is making millions of dollars. You can buy misfit shirts at Walmart, and here's the deal: everybody is hooting and hollering about your new record that came out this year. Let me just point that out: no cross, no crowd. Everybody's saying what a great record it is and how you guys are back and it's this and that. My thing is, is you've been back. What happened to Nine? That was an yeah. amazing record. Yeah, I mean, I like Nothing has stuff. changed except for Pepper. We got Pepper. He's, he's got a cult of personality. He's personable. He's got his kind of, he's, he can croon a little bit, but he's kind of like Yosemite Sam too. You know, he's, they love him. They love him. Let's get into this, Mike. You know what? You've always been very open and honest with the... Uh, uh, throughout the decades of corrosion and conformity. We won't get into the hardcore thing or the origins of that. Anybody who knows COC knows the history. One of the things that bothers me the most, and before I sound negative, let me just say that the new record is great. It really does have a, I don't want to say a rejuvenated sound, but it just sounds like the chemistry of all four of you is back. My question for you is though, he was gone for a while. You guys went on, you released nine, as we mentioned, great record. The chemistry with COC has always been there. When he came back and when you started to jam and maybe concentrate on writing new material, was there any, how did you overcome the, his absence and then bringing him back? Because I know people that I associate with, that I'm not a musician, when they take off, they tell me to go fuck off or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I hold grudges. How did you retain that musical magnetism and true camaraderie to create this new record? Well, we never had any type of falling out. I mean... We made another great record with Stanton Moore playing drums and, and, and you know, Woodrow and, and Pepper called, uh, you know, In the Arms of God back in 2005. It came out, you know, did it in 2004, came out in 2005. And that was, that was some pretty out there shit, you know, it was pretty creative. We were, we were into it and we went out to tour and then this whole Katrina thing happened. Ugh. And so, uh, you know, Pepper was kind of back to New Orleans just taking care of you know, family and, and stuff like that. And the whole that whole story just kind of happened and the guys from down were like suddenly putting out another record. So it was like, we sort of intended to tour more, but it wasn't like we had a like a falling out or anything right. like that. So there was nothing really to overcome more than like, okay, so what do we do now? I was like, well, um, started off writing, you know, kind of reconnected with Reed Mullen, started writing some songs in a band called Righteous Fool that didn't really do too much, but it sort of paved the way for COC getting back together. And, uh, you know, it just kind of took off from there. Just just sort of exploring, like, some of the real old hardcore impulses, but also, like, trying to get into that heavy 70s kind of thing a little bit, too, and just playing around with it. It's fun. To me, it's, like, fun to, like, play bass, be an accompanist, throw some riffs some people's way, see if they like them, you know? On one hand, you know, like, what we're doing now, that's cool. You know, maybe throw in a whole song there or whatever. And then it's also fun to kind of be the guy. Like, you got to come up with some lyrics. You got to write a majority of a song. Or you got to take some weird Woody Weatherman riff, incorporate it, and, and, and throw some vocals on that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all fun either way. I just like messing around with music. So, you know. One of the things that I like about this record, and which has been mentioned over and over and over again, is, the, is the power and, of course, the what is being labeled as the southern heaviness but for me 
I find it that people fixate on this new sound that you have. You guys have been growing as artists and as musicians, and you guys have been evolving as a band for fucking decades. Oh yeah, yeah. What what's what's what is the fixation with either your hardcore early fucking raw roots, and then the whole manifestation into this more heavier, grungier, dingier, sludgy more sound, and why is it that people don't really sit down and just absorb and really cherish the consistency? Yeah, because I mean, the, the places where I'm like, you know what I'm saying, places right? where I'm likely to put my fingers on the neck are pretty much the same thing, and a lot of it's kind of like a blues box or a pentatonic thing that's kind of frankly like very black sabbath derivative very blues based you know what i mean so that's kind of been the same we, we played hardcore songs instead of being you know like major key whatever they were like you know blues blues box clumps of chords you know so it's it's kind of always been there but i, I think you know stylistically when the the band did deliverance that sort of refining that little southern thing, you know, that took us took a step forward or whatever, just just through production and through being methodical. But it's kinda always been there. And I think every time you put out a every time you put out a release, you know, the people selling it have to think of something to say to it, about it, you know, and the publicist has to think of an angle. And it's just kinda talking about it is is problematic, you know. <laughs> Making a lot of uh Let the music speak for itself, though. Yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, I'm glad they're out there lobbying for it, but it's, you know. One of the things that I wanted to get into is you've been on tour with Black Label Society and you are promoting this new record. How are the audiences of this genre of music, because you do have levels, yeah. you're playing with a more, quote-unquote, bigger mainstream band and with has a whole different audience. Are they absorbing the COC? I are they understanding that, it? Are they well, comprehending that's, that's it? a good question because every time you accept a support slot, then you're 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 making less money for one thing, but you know it's a good offer for support. So we're like, yeah, we'll do it. And the reason that you do a support slot is to try to reach out to new people. Correct. Sometimes they just sit there. You know, a long time ago we played a few shows with Disturbed. <laughs> Those people just stood there. Did you really? They, yeah, they stood there and looked. How the fuck was that? I'm gonna come back to that. We're going to come back to that. So those people look basically, they looked at us blankly. But on the Black Label thing, these surprisingly, there's a lot of people that had, they never heard our music, but guess what? It actually goes over well. And yeah. we sell a few like vinyls at the show. And so it's, uh, I think it's, it was a good move, but you never know when you, when you say yeah. And of course, like, they're really, they're really good people. It's a good family atmosphere and they're, they're good to us and, and all that, so it's we're, we're going to do a little bit more of this in the summertime. So, but yeah, it turned out well. But you never know. But yeah. no cross, no crown. One of the things that's very interesting about this record that everyone is fixating on, but that I also enjoy, is the fact that it seems that for the band being without Pepperful out, the energy is still there. The magnetism, the whole camaraderie, the whole creative influences amongst each other seems to resonate very well with this record. My question to you is to break it down simply. It seems like all of you guys had a great time jamming together. Did that, did, when he came back into the project, did it all just evolve into that? Because I, mean, I, know, all, because I know all three of you already have that ugh, that glue. Yeah, we're, we're, we're still on our game, so I mean, it's just a matter of seeing if we still had the chemistry with, with Path, and the idea was just to play a few shows, and we played a few shows, in Europe and then we got offers and we just kept getting offers to play and we had like a record deal and it was like 18 months before we really got around to getting to work on it but when we did I mean yeah it, w it was fun and it came pretty naturally but it, w it was a little bit of, a little bit hard work it was a little intense really? yeah it was a little but you know the, the, the general compositions and stuff like that but just just getting it down I mean because Pepe lives in New Orleans and we live in North Carolina so you have to have him up for you know, maybe four straight days and go 16 hours a day right. and stuff like that. So, but I, I, I mean, I like working like that. So. But does it also, let, let, let's be forward here, let's be frank. You know, it seems that when it comes to marketing and sales of CLC product, the units that you put out, yeah. there seems to be a difference between 
when Pepper's there and when there's not. Does that yeah. does, does that not marinate in the subconscious? Because the majority of the fan base, okay, they seem to recognize with Pepper and your older fan base like myself, yeah. who we enjoy each and every one and remember where you are and appreciate where you are now. I mean, what does it do for you? Does it? Yeah, you know, I got all this perspective on it because I mean, people are into all kinds. Of, <laughs> people have all kinds of ideas, you know. Like, you can't really control like what people's perception to that degree. So, by the way, we could, we could always edit this. So, if you don't want to comment, no, no, you can no, do it. no, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me. I mean, I get that. I like, you know, there's there's some stuff that we did like in the last the last two records, two records before this, and the EP. This little Scion uh, Megalodon EP. There's, there's some good shit there, you know? Some great shit there. Some... I think what's incredible, though, is that here you are. Here's Pepper. You guys do your thing. He does his thing. And then you all come back, and here we are with this record. Yeah. Would it be safe to say that the reason why this record flows so well and why people are perceiving it uh, and accepting it with such open arms, aside from a certain percentage of people that fixate and consider Pepper Wissiosi, is the fact... That is just good old school organic fucking music and jamming. Yeah, I mean it's. I'll tell you, man. We a lot of that stuff's really just barely solidified. We we would uh, we take a brand new idea, have like Reed Mullen or and Pepper or Reed Mullen and Woody, kind of work that into an arrangement. Have mostly those two play together. Sometimes all of us would play together, and basically we. We recorded that the first time it was ever right. It was on tape. If it wasn't on tape, it was on the computer, and we might have to throw it to tape to like change the tempo or something. But it was, yeah, it's pretty old school. There's tape, and there's a lot of. But at the same time, there's. Uh, we wanted everything to be kind of fresh. We didn't get a lot of rehearsing in. We wow. just kind of went. Yeah. We went in there and and made made music and and got it down. Like as soon as that the first time that shit was right. We got it, you know. You think that's what the secret is? Is not really oversaturating yourself with rehearsals and going in there hungry and ready? Yeah, I think we might have. We might have been. A, we we could have probably benefited a little. <laughs> a little. We could, we we had a ways to go with preparation before we would overdo but it. I, I overdo like, it. But I, yeah, I, I, know I, what I you like mean. that going in the studio yeah. raw, man. You know what I mean? It's yep. like that whole you know Brian Funk type of shit from back in the seventies. God, yeah, yeah. One so, take. Let's do it. Yeah.